Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, I'm going to be configuring uh, PPP authentication. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set up a, a simple, uh, simple topology here where we have uh, router one, router two, and we'll have a router three here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, PPP authentication types of uh, CHAP, which is Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol, and we're going to use uh, PAP, which is just Password Authentication Protocol. And I'm just going to show you how they both of those protocols interact. Um, you know what's different with them. Uh, the main difference between the two is, you know, uh, PAP is a plain text. Uh, you know, doesn't do anything with the password. Where uh, CHAP is um, <coughs> uses MD5 hashing. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and make our simple network topology here, uh, R1 to R2 and then R1 to R3 using a serial link. We use a 13.0 slash 30 for the link between R1 and R3 and between R1 and R2 we'll use Twelve point zero slash thirty. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start the routers, and we'll go ahead and start configuring our PPP authentication. Uh, you'll see this PPP authentication. You'll see this, you know, on your studies for CCNA. Uh, you'll see it for. Uh, you might see it on the CCNP. Uh, mainly for the, the ISCW exam where you're going over remote access you know connecting uh, you know remote users in to you know your network you know via maybe a cable technology or uh, DSL um, you also see it in the, you know, the CCIE of course routing and switching uh, is going to have you know uh, PPP authentication uh, both over you know serial links and you know you could also have them over uh, you know a point-to-point -point serial links and you can have them over you know frame relay networks where you run uh, encapsulation over uh, basically you set them up on virtual access uh, interfaces so you can use you know frame relay encapsulation but then you're running PPP authentication on top of your frame relay network. So it can get pretty uh, complicated as one might expect the uh, CCIE to be. But what we're going to do here is just we're going to go over uh, CHAP and PAP. We're going to use on the top here to router 3 we'll use uh, CHAP authentication and then over here down here to router 2 we'll just be using PAP. So we'll go into uh, on the router one here. And we'll also run some debug commands and uh, we'll show you some uh, good stuff that you'll need to know, you know, for troubleshooting uh, PPP authentication problems. First thing I'm just gonna rename the router. start router 2 and what we'll do here now is you can see router 1 serial 10 is connected to router 2 so we'll go ahead and do that first here go interface serial 10 and then the IP address 192.168 uh, 
one slash 30 sub net mass and do a no shut and we we'll go to interface serial one one which is our connection to router three we'll just do the IP address 192 168 13.1 uh, we'll do a slash 30 here as well, we'll do a no shut and Go ahead here and just put this here so we know router one is going to be the dot ones for both connections, and then router three is going to be the dot two, and router two is going to be that two because we're working with slash 30 subnets. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set up router two here. Again, PPP authentication give us a little security, you know, um, we'll lock them down to where they have to have, you know, uh, remote routers going to have to authenticate using, you know, username and passwords. So, again, right here we're on uh, router 2, postname R2. Here, of course, zero one zero is going to be connected to router one, so one nine two one six eight. Then we're at twelve dot two. We'll do a no shut here, and if we do a ping one ninety two one sixty eight twelve dot one repeat hundred. As you can see here, we we have connectivity to router one. Alright, so let's go to router 3.